Hello everyone, I'm Doris Colgate and I'm here with Steve Colgate and we're doing the Dockside Chats again this morning. It's kind of a gray morning out here. Since Steve did a, a number of chats about uh, sailing in the Fastnet Race, 1979 Fastnet Race, I thought you might want to know what it was like to be one of the wives ashore not knowing what was going on during that uh, incredible and pretty scary period for Steve. I want to start with a little bit about uh, the Isle of Wight and cows, where all this starts. The Isle of Wight is the uh, second largest island in uh, England, and it is the mo one of the most popular vacation areas um, of England, and it goes back to the Victorian times. In fact, Queen Victoria's home her summer home, Osborne House, is on the Isle of Wight, and it is one of the locations where we went to some very spectacular formal events in all the years that we were doing these. The Isle of Wight is on the English Channel, and it's separated, there's East Cow, uh, the town of Cows is where the races are held, and it is separated um, by the Medina River from uh, the other side of Cows, which is East Cows, and that part is all on the Solent, which is part of, of the English Channel. I did do a few notes. It's a, it doesn't have very many people living there, only about 10,000. It's uh, two to five miles off the coast of Hampshire, depending on where you measure it. Um, the Queen Victoria really, really loved that part of, of England more than any anyone else. And it is reachable by any kind of true air, except a little tiny airport. So almost everybody, including us, would get there by uh, a ferry from Southampton. Or you could take a fast ferry, which you wouldn't be able to put a car on. Uh, and we had a lot of luggage, so we were always on the big old lumbering car ferry. Cowes is the home of the Royal Yacht Squadron, which was started in 1815, and it has only 450 members. And if you do a Google search on it, you're going to find out that it is its membership is mostly lords and kings and the Aga Khan and sirs, and it's, it's kind of an interesting um, mixture of people. It is another location where we would go to some very fancy events. So as a result, we would be going to Cow's Week with a whole lot of luggage, part of which was formal attire. And before the fastener race would start, us women, if we weren't on the race, would then load up the cars with all of our luggage, all the stuff that the guys wouldn't be wearing on the race and some spare stuff from the boats and then make our way to Plymouth, England, which is where the end of the race occurs. So I want to tell you what happened on that very eventful period of time. On the day the race started, I loaded up the car with my mother-in-law. Steve has told you that that's the reason I couldn't be on the race. With my mother-in-law, with the wife of uh, the owner of Karina, one of the owners of Karina, Pat and I, her husband was Dick Nye, and her father-in-law was also Richard Nye, um, and his wife had gone on ahead of us. And then we had another woman in the car who was a wife of our navigator on the boat, and unfortunately, I don't remember her name. So the car was a little old, tiny type of SUV, a brown thing uh, with a hatch in the back, and it was jammed full of us and tons of luggage. So we drove out to the point where the boats around or go out from the Solent um, and start the massive part of the race. And at that part is called the Needles and there's a lookout point there. So we all went and we stood there with everyone else and I stood there saying, mm, why am I not on this race, darn it? Because the weather was gorgeous and it was fantastic. So then we drove back to the ferry terminal, got on the ferry, took the trip over, by car, and of course we weren't in the car the whole time on the ferry, and got to Southampton where we got off and then started to make our way to Plymouth. But on the way, my mother-in-law insisted that she go to, that we go to Torquay, which is where she spent her childhood days, her summer days. So that's what we started to do. And we did that by going over Dartmoor, which is a vast area of plains that has very little on it. and 
it's it, we were being buffeted by wind and we did not have a radio in the car i don't know whether we chose not to or we just didn't come with a radio so we really didn't know what was going on and when we got down to the streets in torquay which were covered with water we were looked out at the english channel there and it was foaming brown horrible looking water and those of us who had husbands on the boat said to each other or nodded to each other, something's going on. My mother-in-law, though, wanted to have lunch. And so we went into a little place and she chatted away incessantly while the three of us looked at each other in fear, like, what's happening? We don't know what's happening. Nobody could tell us. We finally got her into the car, got ourselves into the car, made our way to Plymouth. And when we landed, outside the Holiday Inn, Pat and I's mother-in-law came running out yelling, 15 are dead, 15 are dead. And at that point, for the first time in my life, I looked at my mother-in-law and I said, go to your room. I would never do that again, <laughs> but I did. And it was a big mistake because she went to her room and she turned on the TV and she saw the Air Sea Rescue teams pulling people from boats, from the water, from little life rafts that they'd gotten into, which they probably shouldn't have. And she was scared out of her mind. Meanwhile, the three ladies, the rest of us who had husbands on the boats, went down to the little lo local yacht club. And there was a list that had a long list of names that of boats that they knew had, had dropped out or had, had terrible things happen to them. But Sleuth, our boat, was not on the list, nor was Karina, Pat and I's boat. So we sat there, clutching our chests, waiting and waiting at the yacht club. I'm getting a little tearful. <laughs> um, to find out if our boats were gonna come in. And suddenly I heard a German reporter say, Sloosh, Sloosh, we've heard from Sloosh. Well, Sloosh, was Sleuth, and yes, they had heard from Sleuth, and yes, our boat had finished. So we women, and Karina, we heard, had also finished. So the three of us, we knew it was a long way from the end of the, where they finished, into, they had to sail then into Plymouth. So the three of us then decided, okay, it's dinner time, let's go get my mother-in-law. By that time, she was an absolute wreck. We got, we went and had a drink at the bar, and in walks Ted Turner, looks at us sort of with a little bit of his drunken sneer and says, ah, Karina, Sleuth, yeah, yeah, well, and then he walked away. We went up to dinner and we sat at dinner looking out through the big open windows into the blackness, looking for the lights of our boats because we were happy. They were coming home. And the next morning they did. And I have to tell you now, so many years later, that was 79, I still remember it as one of the most um, wonderful experiences and the most frightening experiences. And so here we are, we're on the dock and uh, that's my story and uh, I'm done. So Steve's gonna start next with some of his other tales of things that he's done. So bye bye for now.